the Wonder Twins. Wonder Twin powers activate. Welcome to the neighborhood. God says that we should love our neighbor, and he this is certainly so. But who are these that we should care for? Where do we find them? Where do we go? Is a neighbor one who lives near you, someone you play with each day? Your neighbor lives beside you, it's true, but neighbors described in so many ways. Neighbors are folks we see and meet, they're people we don't even know. They're all who we are called to seek and to treat with God's love so God's family grows. In our lives, we'll find more ways to care for the people we meet. For it makes God's heart soar like a dove when we serve others with hearts, hand, and feet. Here we are at lunch on a Thursday with Maya and Macy, and Maya says that she got angry today. What happened, girl? So I got angry today because some boy, he's been mean to me. He spit on me when I was in the night to get lunch, and that was horrible. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So when you think about your zones of regulation chart, what was the strategy you used off of it? That helped you handle that well. I talked to an adult and then I went to the library and called my food down. All right, girl. Way to go. All right, Mason, anything happened for you today? How you feeling? Good. You, oh, no, no, no. We can't say good. We say that we're calm or happy or peaceful or content. What do you think? How you feeling? The food, does it fill your tummy up? So you feeling satisfied? What do you think? Oh, you gotta say it. Yeah. Just today we're gonna think about being scared, all right? And I know that you've had feelings that make you feel um, scared or afraid. Um, and so uh, some people say this is a pleasant feeling, but we're gonna talk about it today as one that maybe is not so pleasant, like when Scaredy Squirrel is scared of everything if you've ever read one of those good books about scaredy squirrel um uh and here's my wonderful shirt that says don't be afraid to read right we don't want to be scared of everything um but uh it's one of those feelings that we need to have a plan for when it does occur okay so we need to know what to do and what to what to how to handle it so when you get scared, it's probably going to be one of those energy up feelings. So not like a blue feeling like sadness and not like a happy, contented, calm feeling like green feelings. It's probably going to start moving to the yellow feelings, right? Now we started with red, all right? We started with anger during our first session. So now we're thinking about, um, you know, that feeling right before the wheels come off. Uh, this is going to be when you have those yellow feelings. So frustration fits in this one. Um, scared can feel fit there uh, those feelings that are the ones where you're wobbling all right you're not quite in control but it's not like with red where you totally are out of control so what we want to do is we want to think about when those ha times happen you can be brave all right this is when you are brave and it's written by Pat Miller so let's try it out when you are brave some days when everything around you seems scary, you have to be brave. Brave as a bird that steps from its nest, hoping to soar through the sky. Brave as a dog that wanders for miles, searching for one well-known light. You have to be brave as a caterpillar that builds a bed, wondering when it will wake up. Because some days are full of things you'd rather not do. It could happen. Like plunging into a pool all by yourself, hoping you'll swim and not sink. Or standing alone in front of a crowd, searching for one friendly face. 
or boarding the bus and riding to school, wondering what lies ahead. At times like these, the whole world can seem too big and too loud and too hard and too much. And when you feel too small and too quiet and too tired and not enough, on those days, look deep inside to find the courage you need. It may be hidden away, but if you close your eyes and breathe, you will see it shining its light in the dark. Warm, steady, and safe. Your light might be small to start up just like a spark, but you can turn it into a flame. Picture it in your mind and then imagine it becoming bigger and bolder and you can make your courage as big as it brightens your heart, it fills your fingers and flows to your toes. Think about what you are good at, something you love, or maybe think of someone who loves you. No one else can, will ever see it, but you will know your glow and you will know you are ready and no matter how deep the water is, or how loud the crowd, or how hard the ride, or how much there is to do, you might struggle, you might succeed, people might clap or, or laugh, or not notice at all, but no matter what happens, you'll be all right. Because once you find your courage, it's easy to use it again and again. And the next time life seems scary or you start something new, you can remember when you were brave. And then you can stand tall and straight and you can walk with that confidence. Knowing you are as brave as a bird, a dog, and a caterpillar. As brave as you. All right, be bold, be brave, cause Lord thy God is with thee. Be bold and be brave, cause Lord thy God is with thee. Be not afraid, cha na 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 na. Be not dismayed, cha na 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 na. Walk in grace and victory, for the Lord thy God is with thee. Yay for the virtue of courage. Little unicorn, suit up whenever you need uh, to feel brave and you need to put on um, all the armor of God. You can find more about it in the book of Ephesians. Thanks for listening, everybody. Keep on breathing. Fruit of the Spirit's not a coconut. The fruits of the Spirit's not a coconut. If you want to be a coconut, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the Spirit because the fruits are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, Gentleness and self-control. Hey, Lillian, how are you today? Hey, I am doing well, thank you. Very good. Well, I, I just said thank you for taking time to visit with um, the Koinonia community today to share a little bit about you and um, uh, let us know about your upcoming adventures and how the fruits of the Spirit are at work in your life. Sure, sure. So you want me just to talk or do you want to ask just, a question? Just, oh, no, just go for it. Tell your okay. story. So, uh, my name is, my first name is Lillian. Um, my middle name is Ijoma and my last name is Okonkwa. So I'm from West Africa. Um, 
my family's from West Africa, but I was born in Congo. Um, there are two Congos. So I was born in the little Congo. Uh, the capital city is Brazzaville. And then we moved to Israel. So I was actually raised in the Middle East. Um, I think we spent time in Egypt. Uh, I remember we spent at least a year in Syria, but the majority of the time was in Israel. We lived in Jerusalem. So, so yeah, so that was home for me for a long, long time. Um, then I went to school in Israel, uh, went to high school in the UK, and then came to the States for college. But all the while, home was Israel. I'd go home for vacations and holidays. Um, and so my father, we traveled a lot because my father worked with the UN, the United Nations. And years later, I also joined the United Nations. So I also kept traveling for work. So I came back to, well, I came to South Carolina to live <laughs> um, around 2016 after finishing my last contract with the United Nations and have been here pretty much since 2016. So last semester, I want to say around November, I was invited to join the UN as a um, trainer. So, you know, the UN has so many branches, so many divisions, but this was their training institute. So they sent us to Tanzania to do an instructor's training, which was really exciting and fun. And then they put us on a roster. So when they need trainers, whether English speaking or French speaking, they would invite us to go. So I was invited to go to Rwanda um, to deliver training. This time I'm going to deliver the training with a team of two or three other folks. Um, so we're leaving next week, <laughs> which is amazing because there's so much preparation to do, so much planning, get all the presentations straight. I haven't even contacted my co-hosts <laughs> for the training. Um, so I'll be in Rwanda, which is Tanzania is southern aspect of Africa, which is different from South Africa. And Rwanda is considered eastern Africa. Um, it actually shares a border with the Congo where I worked, big Congo. And so, so that's the Eastern African zone. So remember, I'm from Nigeria, which is West Africa. So this is a whole different group of people who have different languages, different cultures, different ways of being. So I am excited. Um, I'm excited to be going. And trying to bring it back now to the fruit of the Holy Spirit, um, one Dieta, you mentioned it yesterday. You know, the song has been playing in my head, the fruits of the spirit. And it has been debated that it's actually just one fruit of the spirit that has all these different segments. So love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So I'd like to just mention faithfulness um, and probably self-control. So, and faithfulness, you know, for me could also be perseverance, long suffering um, and self-control. So I think these are really important to guide us in our lives, whatever we do. Uh, we come across all sorts of people in this world and we know God created the whole world and all these countries and all these different cultures. He made all these people in his image. So when we meet people we don't understand or we don't get along with or we just don't like for no good reason, we need to remember that we need to exercise self-control you know, in the way we respect them, in the way we treat them, in the way we speak to them, you know, that God expects us to always be mindful of this fruit he has given us and all the different segments. So as a situation arises, we pull out the appropriate segment to deal with the situation. And then the faithfulness could be seen as faithfulness to God, but also just faithfulness to the things we do in life. So if you're in school, if you're in primary school, be faithful to your studies you know, work hard, do your best, you know, um, if you're in university, if you're working a job, be faithful to the assignments they give you. So we need to practice not just faithfulness to God going to church every Sunday, but just faithfulness in the small things in our lives. And that goes with when you're patient, you're persevering, you're long suffering, you don't let things get to you. 
because you know that God sees you, he sees your efforts, and he sees the fruit of his spirit inside of you. Okay, and God is always with us. He'll be with you as you get on a plane and travel far. He'll be with you as you continue to prepare. I know you've worked super hard on being doing schoolwork and things that you need to do here at seminary, but you're also simultaneously preparing for your um, presentations. And will, will you tell them a little bit about that you're a doctor and that this will be medical kind of um, related, yeah. like what you'll be teaching? Sure. So when I finished, uh, well, when I went to university, I did a special program, which was part of a medical program. So I ended up in the West Indies for med school um, and then finished the rest of med school in Nigeria. So after that, I started working in hospitals. My first hospital was a Christian hospital. So it was just amazing. The staff were Christians and, you know, anyone who walked through the doors, we would take care of them. And then with the United Nations, my role was as a UN doctor. So that's what I did. You know, the UN sends people from all over the world to help with peacekeeping. So whenever they get sick in whichever country we're in, we take care of them, you know. And then this training is to prepare soldiers or police officers, those in uniform, so that when they get deployed to another country, if they should get injured in battle, um, they should if they should fall sick on the field, then their medics will know the basics of what to do. So mm -hmm. American uh, standards, it's fairly high. Uh, European standards are fairly high, but not every country has the opportunity to keep training up their medical personnel. So the uh, countries have invited the UN Training Institute to come and just brush them up, you know, on their pre-deployment medical training skills. Yeah. And you, I know that you mentioned to me too, that the resources that you have available to you are different and, and you're teaching them how to use what is available to do what Absolutely. they can do. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because yeah. for example, a tourniquet, you have a lot of the standard tourniquets that you know, soldiers are given and in many uh, organized military structures, each soldier probably has their own tourniquet, but here probably not. So what could they use instead of a tourniquet, you know? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. You're yeah. absolutely right. Yeah, improvising. Yeah. Yeah. What do you have on your shirt today? Do you have sunshine? You look uh, like the flames. Oh, sunshine on. you let your little light shine. Uh, there we go. <laughs> How about that? I and needed I, some color today. I got some shine. Oh, you got, yeah, nice. I'm rocking on too. <laughs> shine on and rock on. Lillian, thank you so much for being. Now, should we call you doctor and say your last name for us again? Okoronkwo. Okoronkwo. Am I Lovely. Yes, right. that, yeah, you got yeah, it. So, Dr. Okoronkwo. All right. We thank you for your time. And I know you're super busy and uh, we just appreciate your leadership and your example to us all. And I, for one, appreciate all the wisdom of your heart and your experiences, your big brain. And uh, thank you so much for yoga in with me, too. Yes, of uh, course. All right. Yeah. Well, I'll see you for yoga tomorrow, I hope. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, thank you so much. Bye. 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 God is bigger than a boogeyman. He's bigger than Godzilla or the monsters on TV. Oh, God is bigger than the boogeyman. And he's watching out for you and me. It's been so nice to be here today. You made the day special in every way. And this much is most certainly true. You made this day special by just being you. Look around, the we will find no one like you, any kind. And the unique ways that form you, you are, make the world brighter by far. Ah.